Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palanepan Manikev. In this video, we're going to talk about the most important complaint that a patient walks into a gastroenterologist office, which is gas. Feeling full, having flatulence, having abdominal bloating. Let's see what causes this, what you can do to avoid this. Let's dive deep into it. So before understanding about gas, flatulence and bloating, you need to understand some basic steps and basic information. The volume of gas in your intestine is around 200 ml per person on an average. The main composition of the gas is predominantly nitrogen. Other gases include oxygen and methane. But the smell of the gas is mainly related to sulfur containing compounds like hydrogen sulfide mainly and also short chain fatty acids and ammonia. I appreciate Aro Kisami always wants to be in the chemistry lab i thought he was very passionate about it then i realized that if he is in the chemistry lab it is very difficult to differentiate where the hydrogen sulfide smell is coming from so whenever there is excessive gas in the body it could be because of two reasons because you're swallowing more air or you have an imbalance between your good gut bacteria and bad gut bacteria so your nutrients are not absorbed properly which is resulting in excessive production of gas this is one of the main reasons that people are feeling six months pregnant after eating anything we call this as postprandial abdominal bloating you'll be surprised how common this is one in four in normal people have this problem if someone asks me prove it it is easy for me to prove i count three patients inside the hospital like one two and three and for the fourth one i call my patient so the most common cause that I encounter in my clinical practice is twofold. One, we call it a small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We call it a SIBO, which means there is a lot of bad bacteria being accumulated in your intestinal tract compared to the good bacteria. This is what we call as gut imbalance. And the second reason is your stomach and gut might be extremely sensitive and that is why we call as irritable bowel syndrome. It is extremely common given the rapid pace environment that we are in given the stressful responses that we are used to every day in and day out, this has become extremely common in any gastroenterologist practice. But you need to look for some red flag symptoms. If you have significant abdominal pain that is not going away, if you have fever, if you have persistent vomiting, blood in stool and you are losing weight unintentionally, all these are red flags that you need to get attention right away. My patient Aru Kisami is telling me, six months before, I saw something red in the stool. I thought it was because of red chili chicken that I ate. Remember, blood in stool is a red flag. Every. So if you do not have any red flags that I discussed, then the most common problem is your diet. Remember, you are what you eat. Your gas is also what you eat. The first step that you should do is to look into what you are eating on a daily basis. You should avoid gas producing foods in your diet like beans, onions, carrots, prunes, brussels sprouts and even some kind of bananas. I have so many patients who are maintaining the diet chart and can easily figure out if I eat beans, my intestine is very sensitive, I produce a lot of flatulence and if we avoid beans, flatulence gets better. It doesn't mean that you cannot have beans at all, it just needs a rebalance of your gut bacteria and when your bad gut bacteria comes down and your good gut bacteria goes up, you will be able to digest beans again. So let's say you look into what you eat on a daily basis. You created a dietary chart and figured out that I avoided all these foods and still you have flatulence and gas problem. Then we recommend a diet called low FODMAP diet. FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols. Essentially, research have shown that foods rich in FODMAP can increase the sensitivity of the gut and which can increase the symptoms like bloating, flatulence and generalized fullness. I would recommend to learn about what are FODMAP rich foods and try to avoid it one by one and then see whether your symptoms are improving. Some of the examples of high FODMAP rich foods include wheat, barley, rye, milk, fermented products, apples, pears and artificial sweetness. See, except for artificial sweetness, all the other foods are actually good foods, which means that your body is very sensitive to them, doesn't mean that these foods are bad and that will cause you irritable bowel syndrome like futures. I asked my patient Aarok Swami to look for Ford map. This guy is looking for non-veg restaurants in Google map. And the third most important step is to make sure that you are not constipated when your colonic motility, GI motility, 
motility is very slow, abdominal fullness, gaseous distension and flatulence is expected to happen. Adding fiber supplements like psyllium husk, choosing food that can increase the colonic transit by curing constipation, please discuss with your doctor and also a nutritionist to find out what kind of foods might work out for you. So if you have abdominal bloating and constipation, you should be a little bit careful in terms of choosing high fiber diet because these high fiber foods can be a part of FODMAP which can worsen the symptoms as well. So you need to be doing a careful navigation of which food works for you and which food does not. The third step is hydration. Your gut hormones needs water. You need to drink minimum of 2 liters of water per day. If you often walk towards water doctor to drink water, you don't have to see an actual doctor. The next step is to add some kind of exercise, not only just to walking, adding some kind of resistance training will definitely help the colonic motility and also improve your good gut bacteria. Don't give excuses that you don't have time, your body hurts after exercise. Exercise hurts less than your ex lover. Here are the four foods that I would recommend if you have abdominal bloating and gas problems. Number one, pineapple. It contains the enzyme called bromelain which breaks down the protein ingredients and helps the digestion process better and faster. The only time my friend Saruna Kumar has ate any kind of pineapple is when she took a bite of a grilled pineapple in barbecue nation because it looked like a non veg. Number two, watermelon. It has more than 90% water. Similar to how we discussed, hydration is extremely critical. This will help in the digestive process as well. Those days, people predicted the season by looking at the sun. Nowadays, people are predicting the season by looking at the sales of the watermelon. Number three, berries, blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, strawberry. All these are low in carb, high in fiber, absolutely wonderful in helping digestive process. My patient, Arakisami, who had acid reflux, of these berries took gooseberry with salt and masala. His acid reflux turned into a tsunami. He is a sensation in our hospital burning sensation. Number four, yogurt. If you are not lactose intolerant, this is a wonderful source of probiotics which will help in digestive process as well. Try this out and see whether your symptoms are improving. More importantly, it is extremely critical to eat slowly and chew your food at least 32 times. When you're eating fast, you're swallowing air as well. That increases your gas problem more. And if you're more than 40 or 45 years old and this symptom keeps happening despite doing all these things, it is absolutely important to go to a gastroenterologist to see whether you need endoscopy. Endoscopy is a procedure where we put a camera down your throat and take pictures, take biopsies if needed and see what is happening inside your gut. I did an endoscopy on my friend Sarana Kumar. After the procedure, he's asking, am I photogenic da? If you think you got anything from the video, I'm not asking you to subscribe. I'm asking you to support our non-profit organization called Vannamalagal Foundation, where we support Aishwarya Trust in Madurai and also we embrace here in Sacramento area, supporting cerebral palsy kids, autism kids and also neurological patients who cannot eat, swallow or even drink water, who needs 24-7 clinical care. Your support is absolutely needed. So if I was a patient who's having some gas problems, if I'm watching this video, I will be educated on the general topics and understand that this is not individualized and I try these methods and if this doesn't work out I will go to a doctor right away to make sure that there is nothing else going on in your intestinal tract. Remember food is the medicine you are what you eat focus on what we have to eat and our gut will focus on how to keep us better. Remember one belly at a time it is absolutely important. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.